Hey guys, welcome to the Scholar Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning, okay? In this channel, we make a lot of videos on web development, WordPress design, e-commerce development, Python development, and a whole lot more. We will take you through the process of everything we're teaching you from beginning to end, step by step, so that you can follow along and build as we build, all right? If you're new to this channel, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button is gonna be red right underneath the video that you're watching and like this video and comment on these videos. Let us know what works for you, what doesn't work for you so that we can create content that is more relevant to what you guys want to watch, okay? Also, underneath the video that you're watching, there is that show more button underneath the description please open it up and have a look at some of the links that we've created for you. Every time that we make a video, we will you, we will add all the useful links underneath it. So if you hear me saying in the video that I'm going to link it in the description below, that's where you'll find the link in the description underneath the video, all right, for more information to help you learn along, all right? And a lot of the videos that we make, also we will create timestamps because our videos are long. You don't have to watch the entire video. You can go through the timestamps and read which part of the video you are interested in watching, click on the timestamp and it will fast forward you to that part of the video and you only have to watch that, all right? And we also have linked in the description below our social media channels. So feel free to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We've got our website right there. And if you want to get in touch with us, my email address is also available in the description below. So let's start learning. In this video, we are going to go back to our roots for this channel. If you've been with us from the beginning, when we started, we used to do a lot of e-commerce, WordPress video tutorials, because it doesn't matter how advanced I get in my development journey, there's always those clients that come in and they want an e-commerce website. And one of the best, fastest ways to actually create an e-commerce website is to use an existing framework like WooCommerce and WordPress. I actually do not build e-commerce websites from scratch myself. And the e-commerce clients are always coming. Every now and then, maybe 30, 40% of my clients will be requiring an e-commerce website. So I always make sure that I'm on top of things when it comes to the latest movements in the industry so that I'm ready to serve the clients. And if you're in web development, you will have to work on your e-commerce building capacity because this is a business that is constant. It's one of those businesses that keeps the lights on in the house. Um, so in this week, I'm going to show you Yoko. Yoko recently released a um, e-commerce online payment system um, functionality to their product offering, which I think is really amazing because uh, PayFast has been one of the most accessible ones in South Africa for beginners, for startups. There are a lot of other payment processing uh, options out there for South Africa, but PayFast has been the most accessible. And by the most accessible, I mean has been the easiest to set up without requiring a lot of hoops to jump through, where you can simply just go to their website, open an account, get a number, get started. And Yoko is now going to play in that space. And that's what I like to work with. I don't like bulky services that you go to their website and they're still going to ask you for documentation and uh, well, documentation, yes, you, you, you've got to get that, but they're still going to like still have to get somebody to call you so they can assess the size of your business and they've got a whole lot of things to go through. That's not how to do business in the 21st century. You should be able to just have, go to their website, create an account, get started, perhaps submit some documentation, email it, attach it on a form, and you're done. And so I'm going to try out Yoko today. Um, and I'm going to put a link in the description below that you can follow to get started. But if you want to follow along with us, um, just Google Yoko on Google over there and you'll find it. And then um, obviously there's, there's the, always the ad version and I, I like to click on the non-ad Yoko so I don't charge it so, that, so they don't pay for my click. But um, if you get to their website, just click on, um, you know, the first, um, you know, Google thing that comes up and you will come to this uh, page over here where you will get started with Yoko. So they've always had card machines and probably the most accessible card machines for entrepreneurs and startups. And I like their, how, you know, they're thinking and, and, and trying to be more, you know, 
easy to work with. You know, the card machines are small, portable, very affordable for people to just get into um, a, a accepting payments. But I'm not going to go into the card machine option. I'm going to go into the online payment option because that's what I want to integrate into our WooCommerce. So click there on online payments and let's see what's out there. Also, there's Yoko Link, Yoko Gateway, um, Developer Docs, Yoko Voucher. So I'm going to go for Yoko Gateway. Yoko Gateway. There you go. So on Yoko Gateway, um, there's a lot of things that I'm, I, I don't think I'm going to go through, but um, when you have time, go to their website and read, especially understanding their pricing. Pricing is the most important thing. And in this, in this specific case, it would be on the fees um, tab. Um, and if you look there, you will see how much they are charging because I'm quite familiar with the pay fast pricing, but I haven't read this in detail because I haven't integrated this before, right? So how much money will you process through your copy month? I want to see online fees, all right? 3.4% excluding VAT, the more you grow. You'll pay 170 rands. Um, when we only take the money when you make money, All right? And okay, so so their pricing is at a rate of three point four percent. They're charging three point four percent on card payments, and if you're gonna make five thousand rands, um, they are est if you estimate you'll make five thousand rands, you'll end up paying about one hundred and seventy rands. I think this is slightly lower than pay fast fees because pay fast is sitting at about four percent. I think if I can recall correctly, but uh, I stand corrected. You'd have to double check on their website. So this is reasonable within within the range of normal um charges this means that whatever you're selling um because they are processing the payment for you they have to make their revenue and they're going to take a bit of a percentage of that money before they deposit it into your bank account so if you're selling something for 100 rand they're going to take 3.4 rand 3 rand 40 cents and keep it for themselves and they'll give you 100 rand minus 3 rand 40 cents in your bank account and that's how the payment works but then the nice thing about using a payment processor like yoko is that you don't have to design your own payment processing a flow within your website which is quite complicated and it has a lot of requirements and legal and um you know regulatory things that you must jump through to make sure that your you know your payment processing is approved according to security risks and being able to you know process people's credit cards so actually nobody builds their own payment processing they we use existing platforms like yoko and payfast we just try to make sure that um, the fees are not too high and they charge you that for the services that they're providing you. So I think I'm pretty much happy with the fees. And over here, you will see they've got integrations for Wix.com. They've got integrations for WordPress and they've got the integrations for WooCommerce. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use the WooCommerce integration and we're going to click there where it says learn more. And it looks like when you get here, um, you know, build exactly where you, so this is, uh, learn more about WooCommerce, but, um, I know how to build a WooCommerce store and I'm going to take you through that here today. But, um, when, once we've built our store, then we will integrate WooCommerce. So to get you started, click on the get started button and get through the process flow of creating a Yoko account. I already have a Yoko account, so I'm not going to do that, but you do that. And, um, you can pause this video here and go through the process. So what they'll do is that they'll ask for your information. You know, in South Africa, you have to provide your proof of address and you have to provide business related information, your company registration documents. I think I'm not sure, but um, go through that process, get yourself registered. It should be straightforward. And then once you're done, you can come back inside your Yoko dashboard and then we'll continue from there. Now, the second part of our tutorial is something I've covered already in this channel. So if you already know how to set up your WordPress WooCommerce store website, you can skip this and go over to the, right at the end when we're doing the payment integration. I will have timestamps in the description in the video below so that you can skip right to the moment that you need to go to. But if you haven't created an e-commerce store before and you want me to take you through the process of actually getting started from scratch, creating your e-commerce uh, website, you can come and uh, follow along in this next part of the tutorial. I'm going to take you from scratch. So go over to domains.co.za. If you don't know how to get there, I will also put a link 
in the description below that can take that will take you to Domestio Ciro ZA because you will need a web hosting a package to get started for creating WooCommerce. But the nice thing about hosting your own e-commerce website is that the costs are the lowest compared to trying to use something like Wix or Shopify that is a hosted solution and a well-managed solution. The problem with those systems is that the cost can get really, really high. And when you're getting started, when you're not sure about the revenue that you're going to be getting and you're stuck with a 600 to 1000 rand cost a month on a website that you don't know if you're going to make money from, it can get very expensive. Now, if you come to domains.co.za over there and you click on hosting, you should go to web hosting. And if you, when you get to web hosting, you will see the prices and the starter price of 89 rents per month is actually sufficient. It's more than sufficient for you to get started with an e-commerce business. And this is the one that I recommend you go for. And I'll get clients that will say, oh no, but you know, I can get something from every host for like 50 rands. Trust me, some of these ones that are 50 rands or 20 rands hosting packages don't offer you the same the same goods inside. So every time you're comparing hosting packages, make sure that you are aware of the SSD storage that they're giving you. And um, specifically, if they're giving you SQL databases and how many SQL databases they're giving you, these are the most two important variables to take care of. And when it comes to an e-commerce business, you need at minimum this four five gigs. So this five gigs is sufficient for e-commerce. I'll get people that come to me with a 20 rand hosting package that like, oh, 20 rands is cheaper than this. And then I look at the SSD storage that they've got, and then it's sitting at something like, you know, less than even one gig and it can one gig can host because the size of, of the website that you're going to be building the, the, the capacity of the website, it needs to be sufficient for e-commerce. You're going to have uh, payment processing. You're going to have a lot of things and you need the right capacity and over and above this storage. There is something also they call um, transfer, you know, the transfer capacity, like the, the data that comes with the website. Now, um, I don't see it listed here, but I know it, the one that they give you with um, this package is normally sufficient because you can get SSD storage that's high but then you find that that transfer limit is a bit low. So your website becomes really, really slow. And when people go to your website, it's like it's, it's, it's not loading fast enough. And WooCommerce has to do a lot of things. So people will be trying to buy on your website and then it freezes and things like that. And you don't want that, right? So when it comes to your hosting package, if you're serious about business, you should be able to afford 89 rands a month. It's not a lot of money to get started. So forget about those cheap 20 rand, 40 rand hosting packages that are not going to give you what you need for e-commerce. And just trust me on this one. I get so many clients that tell me that and they always regret it at the end and they still come back and just do what I told them to do. Now, in this specific case, we will click order now. I'm not going to order this because I've already ordered one. In your case, if you don't have a hosting package, you can click order now and then um, you'll do you'll go through the payment. And the nice thing about what uh, domains as well is that they take a month to month payment. So if you decide at some point you're no longer interested, you can just cancel your service and they don't they will not penalize you. But the thing is that, you know, then your website will go down. But um, so but but you don't have to sign contracts. You know, you can pay it month to month. So you can pay this 89 rands on the first month and see how it goes. And then the next month and so forth and so forth. If your business doesn't do well, then you can just stop paying and you can cancel the package. So it's really up to you. It's very flexible in that sense. Now, click order now, get started. You'll pay, give the email address. Then they will send you an email with a link to what they call C panel. That's very, very important. So keep note of that URL and the login details that, that will be sent to you in that email. That will allow you to log into the C panel, which is a control panel where you'll be able to now uh, install your WordPress website, right? I'm going to give you like a couple of minutes. You can pause here and then come back later once you've done that. Right. If you're back now and you've sorted that out, you will have cPanel login details. Go over there and log into cPanel and um, you will be faced with um, a, a control panel that looks like this for a package you've already created. As you can see, I have already logged on to my cPanel 
and um i'm going to now um show you how cpanel looks like at the very top is where you can manage your emails if you have a package for example like this one which came with 25 email accounts you would be able to come there and create an email account with a domain that you've purchased your website with but in my specific case i'm not gonna worry about that i don't wanna waste your time with all these things when you have time go through them and explore. What we want is the applications that go with the cPanel. So cPanel allows, has got a lot of the cPanels will have this one easy, quick install applications for WordPress. We're going to use the one that, um, that is, that has got WordPress on it. It will be right at the bottom of a typical, um, cPanel, uh, 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 arrangement. Just click on it like that. And it will take you to this application called, um, um, soft, soft something. I can't spell it. I can't, I can't always pronounce it, but this is the application where you can now install your WordPress website. But, um, in my specific case, I just recalled, I need to create a subdomain first because I'm going to do this on a subdomain. I'm not going to do this on my main website, but in your case, you can simply continue uh, from here and do it on your main website. So I'm going to go back in my case, and I'm going to go under subdomains and I'm going to, um, there it is, subdomains, and I'm going to create a subdomain. So I'm going to call it uh, uh, Scolo. I'm going to call it Scolo, and then I'm going to create it under web design. Web design Johannesburg.co.za. Actually, web design Johannesburg.com. Right? And then I'm going to create a subfolder called Scolo, and then I'm going to say create. Good. So that's had, that's been done. And once you do that, the first time, if you've just created a subdomain and this is fairly new, you have to make sure that your SSL certificate has been installed. SSL is, is your safety certificate. It's that key uh, that sits at the top of your website over there. All right. So to do that on cPanel, because it takes time to install it. And if you purchase a domains account like I've done, it comes with a free SSL. You don't have to pay for it. You used to have to pay for it in the past, but now they've integrated the free SSL into the systems, which means that over time, they will just install the SSL on your certificate, on your website for you for free. But because you've just bought this domain now, the system that installs the SSL hasn't run yet. So you have to actually manually run it to get the SSL installed. So you'll need to go into um, SSL TLS uh, status, that one, I think that's the one. Um, and then you need to, um, uh, it's always running this auto SSL. It's always in progress. So because, um, we just installed a new subdomain, I just have to look for it here inside my list of subdomains. Um, okay. So I'm going to search for it because I can't find it. I just created it now. Scolo. There you go. All right. So Scolo web design, johannesbeck.com and www.scolowebdesign.com. Both of them, the SSL has already been created and the domain validated. So I'm good to go. All right. So, um, once you've done that, then you can go back to WordPress. And when you get here, you just, um, click install now. Okay. Click install now. And then over there, you will pick the domain that you want to install the WordPress on. So, um, I definitely want to do it on HTTPS. Always install it on HTTPS, never install it on HTTP because eventually, especially with e-commerce, because you are processing people's credit card details and information, you must work with HTTPS. It also creates credibility and, and it's available for free. There's no reason why you wouldn't do it. And then, um, over there, you will then pick the website that we just built now. Um, I must find it here. Web design, scholarwebdesign.com is the one that I want to do it, um, uh, for and, um, um, no relative to the domain, uh, I'll do it on the main directory. Okay. And then over there, the site settings, you can pick the name that you want to give your website. So I want, I'm going to call this specific. I'm going to call this, um, scholo, right. And then I'm going to call it scholo online e-commerce right and then i'm gonna change the username and password over there um i'll freeze it so you don't see what i'm typing it in the meantime and then you get to select your admin email address This is very important to get this correctly. I've had a mistype, misspelling in, in this part before, and then you'll struggle resetting your password. This email address is absolutely crucial. It must be correct. 
Then once you're done with that, um, choose the language. English is fine. Um, uh, limit login attempts. Um, classic editor. Mm, yeah, this is this is good actually to have. And um, classic editor is good to have as well. Advanced options. I'm just going to do and um, install. Awesome. So your website has been installed. And if you've installed it correctly, you will see WordPress is successfully installed there on your domain, scholarwebdesign.com and the admin URL. So you get two different URLs. The first URL is the URL for your website itself. So if you right click on this, it should take you to your actual website right now. And the second URL is the URL of the admin. It has WP admin at the end. It means as the admin of the, of the website, you can log in there to make changes to your website, log into the back end of the website. So I'm going to then open that also in a different window because I like to keep both these windows open at the same time so I can see what my website looks like. This is it. And you'll see the key at the, at the, at the front of the website there. This is your SSL certificate it's been installed correctly and this is the blank website out of the box that comes in from wordpress when you install it for the first time obviously we're going to change this and make build it into what we want it to look like and at the back end which was the second link over there that i opened in a new window opens up in here and it logs you in already because it knows who you are and um, you can see this is what a blank wordpress back end looks like now, to help you navigate quickly, at the top there, you will see Howdy Bertha. This is your name um, as the admin of the website. You are the current user, and you can always create multiple users. Um, you would do that on the navigation to the left. So the WordPress navigation, the way it works, you'll see at the top is the dashboard home. This is where we are right now. There will be some notifications, but a lot of them are not so important. But if there's anything that that is worrisome on your website, you'll be able to see it here. Then the next thing will be the post. The posts are the blogs that you create on your website. You must know WordPress was initially created as a blog content management system. So um, the blogs are always front and uh, content um, that's always available on a WordPress website. Here you can go under posts. You can see all your posts, add a new post category and so forth. So um, this is your blogs. If you go to all posts, you will see all the blogs that are available on your website. The first time you create a blank WordPress website from scratch, it will come with this Hello World blog that is um, there to just show you how to do a blog. This is this comes with the website. It's the same blog that you see there at the, on, the, on the home page as your first as your first um, uh, blog. All right. So what I like to do is that I like to just go and delete that i mean not edit delete move to trash apply and delete that post if you do that and you refresh your website you'll see there's nothing there now your website is completely blank you've deleted that initial post then after that is your media your media is where you upload images and um things that are going to be used on your website so if you want to display an image you it will come through the medium your pages are all the pages that you have on your website the privacy policy the sample page obviously the home page for now is the home blog page but um these are all the different pages that are that that are that are default that come with your website so i also like to um delete these as well because i'm going to load a whole new um website from scratch that doesn't have any page in it and then you have comments these are comments that what is happening there all right these are comments that come with the blog so because i deleted the blog there's no comments for now appearance is where you go to customize your website okay so the first time i do this i like to come to appearance and then you'll see there are different these are the themes that come with your website this is the one that is currently installed you will see it's 2021 because we're in the year 2021 and it's the default theme for wordpress for 2021 now there is 2019 and 2020 for last year and the year before what i like to do when i get here is click on that the themes i'm not using and delete them to reduce clutter on your website because the theme if it exists here it's actually also sitting in your database in the back end and if you're not using it it's just useless files sitting there good practice is to come over there 
and delete these old themes so that they are not there anymore and you're only left with the one theme which you are currently using on your website now the next uh, thing is your plugins the plugins on your menu this is where these are the plugins that you will be using on your website we will be talking a lot about plugins you will see even woocommerce is a plugin when you need to add a new plugin you will do it from the plugin section clicking add in there to add a plugin plugins are sort of like libraries that just assist um, you to continue building your website and then you'll have the users the users are the users of the of the website Currently, I'm the only user and I'm an administrator. So a user has a name, an email address, and a role. So when you come there, you can add new users at the top there, and you can give them a name, an email address, um, uh, and a password. And then very importantly, you can assign a role to them. So you have different roles you can assign there. You have an administrator who has the administrator rights to your website they can do anything they can make changes they can even delete the website they can do all everything that can be done on the website so administrator rights i highly recommend it that you keep it to the developer of the website if you are the developer only you should have administrator rights to your website other people you can give different access rights to so if somebody just wants to edit the website and they wanna and they are your website builder or they are your graphic designer you can just give them um, editor access which means they have rights to edit the website if you hire somebody that's going to help you writing blogs on your website and you just want them to be able to log in and add their blog content then you want to give them author rights so they only have the rights to add content and contributor rights subscribers are front end access rights to your for your clients who come to create accounts because they are also registered as users on your database but they are noted as subscribers so they only have, have front end rights they can't do anything in the back end so this is what the users this is what you can do on the user side and then you have the tools and the settings which for now i don't think you have to worry about um and this is basically the navigation to a wordpress back end now to get started with wordpress we are going to install a website theme because as you can see this 2020 theme is a little bit boring and it doesn't look professional at all i'm showing you here right now on this channel how to build a professional looking wordpress e-commerce website that you can even sell to other clients charge them anything from five to ten thousand rands for building this type of website all right and i'm going to do it in this channel in just about an hour now when you're getting started here um the best way to build a professional looking web wordpress website and this is what all the developer house the programming house all the programmers out there do when they do wordpress website is to use an existing theme that has already been built by somebody else and use an existing design that has already been done by somebody else nobody today starts building a wordpress website from scratch unless if you really find a custom client who has very very custom needs and for that you can charge them even twenty thousand rands upwards if they are very specific that they want a custom design for them if it's just a normal client who just wants a normal e-commerce website what you can do is that you can come in wordpress over there and you can go into appearance and under appearance you will see themes right and you can say add new theme and under add new theme you will shop around for different themes that are available for websites and wordpress and there is a lot of themes inside of here all right some of them are free and some of them are paid themes all right so it depends on you so but the problem with buying themes here as well if you're not familiar with the theme that you're buying is that some of them come with um, starter websites some of them don't come with starter websites so you might want to shop around a little bit and see what's available right my favorite for specifically professional design themes is using Envato Elements or you can use Envato Market. So there are two different places. They're really, really, there are levels of professionalism. So the professional, low level professionals will use Envato Elements, which is over here. You go to elements.envato.com. You pay a monthly, sub, you pay a monthly subscription once off, right? Which is about $14 a month, uh, about uh, 100 
just less than 200 rands on a monthly basis. And you will have access to hundreds, in fact, thousands and thousands of themes, paid themes. Some of these themes are there on Invaro Market uh, and they get and you have to pay for like $20, $30 per theme to download, right? And you come here and you find that you're going to pay once off and you can download 10, 20 of those kind of themes. So to be honest, Invaro Elements is your best value for money out there right now in the industry of web development themes and templates that I have found. And I've been in the industry for a while and I've seen all the options. I sometimes go to Invaro Market if, if, if I'm looking for something really, really specific that I cannot find on Invaro uh, Elements and then I'll pay a little bit more for it. But the 90% of the cases, 95% of the cases, you'll be able to find a theme on Invaro Elements. Now, when you get here, you will just at the top, you search for what you're looking for because I want an e-commerce single product. Uh, I searched at the top there and make sure you're searching under WordPress because over there you can search for in different sections. You have CMS templates, web templates, fonts, photos, graphics. I mean, Invaro Elements is just amazing. It's amazing. You can get images, videos, stock videos, you know, templates for portfolios, templates for you know, um, I build sometimes a company profile document. You can get nice templates for that that are already pre-designed by the best designers in the world. And you just sort of like edit here and there. And then you charge somebody like 10 grand for it, right? So you come here and you search for what you're looking for. For In this specific case, I'm searching for WordPress. When I have time, I will go through one of these days just a tutorial on Invaro Elements because it requires, it needs a whole tutorial in and itself. So um, when you have, when you are done shopping, right, uh, for your theme, what I love about Envaro is that, um, you know, the pricing is really, really good and you can get to inspect what your website is going to look like. So I'm going to open this in a new window and um, you get pictures of what the website looks like, but you can also use their live preview option over there. And you can live preview the website before you download it on in, in real and what it's going to look like. When you're live previewing a website, there's a couple of things to pay attention to. Um, the most important one is the mobile flexibility or the what they call responsiveness of the website. So on your window, just like make it smaller like that all the way. This is what a mobile device, then this is what the website should look like on a mobile device. And I think I like the look on a mobile device. Um, so, um, and then you, you extend it again and, um, I like that final, you know, uh, look there. So I'm going to close that website and then I'm going to click on download because I'm downloading this theme so I can work with it and, uh, pick the project you want to download it to and immediately you can download the theme. And while we're searching for themes over here, you will see, I specifically, um, searched under CMS masters, you have options, um, I, I searched under CMS Masters, which means at the top there, I clicked CMS Masters, so it showed me only the, those um, um, those websites. Because on Envato, there are different designers and different companies that create um, these themes, and they all do it differently. They are really good ones and not so great ones. I've used CMS Masters themes before, and they're really well designed. They are some of the days I've found um, to work with, although, um, it might be too much, uh, too overwhelming for somebody who's a beginner, but they look really professional and they're well done. Um, and, but if you have time, you can play around, try something, check it out if it works, if it doesn't work. Um, and then you can download it. So, uh, the download is still happening. They is taking a bit long and, um, I think it's done now. Yep. Looks like it's done. So then after it's done, I'm going to close that and throw this in the bin. And then I'm going to go and check out the theme that I've just um, downloaded. I'm going to move it to the desktop over there so that we can open it nicely and see what's included inside of the folder. There is two themes that's included inside of the folder. You will have a child theme and the main theme. The child theme is really for if you want to make edits to it. And you can install both of them, the child and the main one. It's really up to you. Um, but the important thing that I want you to pay attention to is the documentation. So that will be under docs. They'll name it differently depending on what you're downloading. And just double click on that index file and it will open it in a um, your Chrome so you can see it in a website. 
Um, what's important here is what the, you know, the maximum uh, uploads. This is important for you to set this up inside of your .htc access before you get started because the themes usually are quite large and it can be an issue uploading it. So I'm just going to click on this and copy that and I'll show you where you need to paste it inside of your HTC file. You go to um, your, 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 your host, which, which was over there, your domains. Um, let's just um, go to the beginning, log in, log in and um, go to file manager, right? File manager. And instead of file manager, you go to public HTML. And you look for the folder where your website is. I know I've got a couple of subdomains, so don't worry about it. In your case, if you didn't have a subdomain, it would be on the main folder. So in my case, uh, subdomain, the one that I did was Colo. So this is where my website is. And um, currently, you'll see there isn't a lot of files. I mean, there is a lot of files, but um, this is a blank website. You see the size of the files is quite small. Um, so go and look for this file called HTC Access. Um, uh, if it's not there... There's something you can do here to view the dot files. Sometimes the dot files are hidden and you can't see them. Um, if you can activate the dot files and, and the file is really not there, you can create it, right? And um, Google how to do this if you don't see this file in the... Um, it will take me too long to go through all the possibilities of what could be wrong. Now, if you find that file, the HTC access file, you click on edit, edit the file and then you, um, you edit it. And right at the bottom of that if module, in between before the end of the end WordPress, all right, just paste those lines over there with the max sizes and everything and input variables and then save changes over there. And then once you've said, if you see success, you can close that, all right? And then you go back to your admin um, over there where your website is, where you're uploading it, where you're selecting for the new themes. We're not going to install any one of these. Um, you can if you want. Uh, but I'm going to click on upload a theme and then uh, over there you have an option to choose a file. And remember, the file that you upload, you must do it in zip format, okay? Don't unzip the file and open it up. Choose it in there and go to your uh, desktop and file that, find that folder over there. And remember, there is the main uh, theme and the child theme. We're just going to install the main theme only in this case and click open and click install now. So if you get to this page, everything was installed successfully, right? And then we will activate it. Right. And here you can change your, your website um, logos, everything, but I will not do this for now. I'm going to go to the dashboard because at this point you need to install all the required plugins because the plugins are not installed yet. The, the theme won't work without the plugins. So at the top there, you will see, once you install the theme, um, the, the, this warning will appear automatically on your dashboard. So that's the best place to find it so you can go know where to go to install the plugins. Now just click on begin installing all plugins and there is a lot of plugins over there. Just uh, select that which selects all of them, right? And then click apply. You don't have to install all of them. You can have a look and pick and choose what you want. For example, in Viral Market, you might not need that. But in my case, I'm just going to do all of them. And um, and it looks like the um, install, apply. Right. So it's installing them. And you can see it's counting down as it's installing them. Just give it some time. It will go through it and do the installation. WooCommerce. Great. Then you can return to required theme so you can activate them. So again, click all of them like that. And in this case, you know, instead of activating one by one, click all of them and use bug action activate. To activate all of them awesome so go back to your dashboard and now it will take you through the WooCommerce setup because um, now WooCommerce has been installed and it needs to be set up so I'm going to enter my address over here not my correct address I am in South Africa. How ding. 
I am in four ways. My postal code is 2196. Two. All right. Let me send in. I'm in send in, and the code is 2196. I'm not setting up for a client. Count me in. And here you get to pick the industry that you're in. I'm just going to say other and say oil and gas. Continue. And here is the types of products you're selling. Because we're selling physical products, just tick that and continue. How many products do you plan to display between 1 and 10? I am uh, not currently selling elsewhere. Then over there, you get to choose the different plugins to be added over and above the WooCommerce plugin. A mail poet works like MailChimp, but this is an emailing uh, plugin. It allows you to create a mailing list, which is very, very important for e-commerce to have a mailing list. So when people purchase, they have the option to subscribe to your mailing list and they will get added automatically to this mailing list. So choose which one you like to work between mail poet and MailChimp. Then on a regular basis, you can create marketing emails where you're constantly reminding your clients if you've got a sale, a promotion, you know, and they always have an option to opt out, by the way. So I'm going to pick uh, MailChimp because I already work with it in other places and I've got an account there running. Facebook, this is where if you have a Facebook page and you also want to sell on Facebook, I've done a tutorial on this channel where you can integrate Facebook commerce to your WooCommerce store so you can keep your products on WooCommerce and be able to sell them at Facebook, on Facebook at the same time. So um, I'm going to keep that on and Google Ads, I'm going to switch that off. I don't like this Google Ad version because they sort of manage Google Ads for you and they're not very efficient and they're quite expensive because they take a cost for themselves. Um, you'd rather just pay Google directly and manage this yourself. I also have a video on this channel where I show you how to set up Google Shop and connect that to your Google Ads account so that you can have Google um, Ads for your e-commerce store in a, a proper manner. So you can look at that tutorial and follow that instead. So I think those are the only plugins I will do. Then when you get here, you've got an option to continue with your theme or pick a different one. These are now specific e-commerce themes. Some of them are not free, but we uh, already have a pretty decent theme that we didn't pay a lot for. And I'll say no thanks. And you're good to go. So now we'll take you through the e-commerce setup, but we don't need to do this because the theme that we've installed is going to come with pre-built websites that we can work with, which the product will be set up in those pre-built sort of demo websites. So instead of doing this, we will use that instead. So um, to access that, I think we need to go into at the bottom here of your, now you will see your sidebar has changed quite a bit because now there's other things that were not there before GPDR cookie consent. These are really useful things to have on your website. If you just go all the way to the bottom under the environment market, there is demo content import. Just click on it over there and you'll see options to install your a demo content. And over there you can choose the you know uh, which which demo content you want to install between main and alternative. All right, so I think I'll pick main and then you can choose what you must install. You know, um, import demo posts, pages, images, categories, attachments, import widgets, import theme settings and sliders, yes, import everything and click yes, and then it will go through there and install the demo content for you. So let's just wait for it to finish. All right. So it's got some errors. Um, stuff we didn't import. But um, at this point, I'm just going to go to my website. Remember what we had there and have a look at what was actually imported. There are two ways. Check over it. You can look for it there. Um... So now the website is completely different. Even the, 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 the theme, you can see the background, everything looks completely different. Um, so this is the grasshopper theme that we got from our CMS Masters, which looks amazing. This is why I told you guys, I love working with CMS, CMS Masters themes. In fact, I use the majority of their themes for my websites that I do for paying clients. 
because they really build, you know, they think about everything. Everything is included. If you look at the, uh, what comes with the theme, you know, the cookie consent, which is a requirement now, um, GPDR to have that option in your website where people can accept the cookies. They must know that they're cookies. That's very important. Not all the themes come with this. Otherwise, you have to install it separately. You have to know to install it, right? Um, uh, there's a lot of things, slider revolution. So if you look over here, this is a slider. Um, obviously, you will update it and, um, you know, maybe I'll do a whole new tutorial on updating this theme and that's not the purpose for this one. I won't do it here. In this specific case, uh, the only thing I'm going to show you now going forward is how to install payment processing. So I've taken you through the process of you installing your e-commerce website from scratch. Now, all you need to do is to edit this yourself to fit your business. Obviously, you will put in your own logo there. You will change this to say what you want it to say. You will add your own image over there and, and change all of this content. So all you have to do now is just change the content. You see the menu has already been done for you as well with your address and, and you can pick the different things you want on your menu. So everything is pretty much done. The e-commerce functionality is there. Now, what you want is to go back here for e-commerce, there are two things to pay special attention to or the places where you want to make edits. The first part is your products. So you click on products there and you can see the products that have been added with a theme. So they only added like three example products in there and they have some example pricing and, and whatever. So this is where you would come. Initially, maybe you would delete all of these products or you can click on them. And you can just maybe instead of deleting, edit them and put in what you want, right? So you can edit the product information there and you can change that, you know, to be what you want it to look like. And you can add the product image. Um, you can go to the bottom and do a lot of changes with the product page, where, where, where that, what it must look like. But um, there's a lot of videos I've done on this channel, uh, specifically one where I show you how to edit the product page specifically for SEO, all right? So have a look at that. I will link it as well in the pro in the description below where I show you how to edit the product page for SEO. There's a lot of things and you can come and do your categories, your product categories. You can change them here, add new categories, edit existing categories. You can also build your categories for SEO um, while you're doing it. You're going to do that all over there. So this manages your products and your product categories, this whole section. Then you'll go to the WooCommerce section. And in the WooCommerce section, um, you'll go to the settings. All right. And inside of the settings, this is where you will change your address. Okay. You will have your settings around your products. You know, um, uh, you'll have your settings around your shipping requirements. You'll do all of that in the add shipping zones. That's very, very important. And then you come to payment processing. Now, when it comes to payment processing, you'll have PayPal comes initially in, uh, in there and uh, cash on delivery uh, and so forth. This is where we're going to add our option for uh, Yoko payment processing so that we can do payment processing uh, directly in our store. So I'm going to assume that you're going to go and check the videos I have on this website. I'll show you exactly how to custom and integrate and build your e-commerce store because it's going to take us a long time if i'm going to do this in this video i'm going to assume that now at least i've shown you how to create a store from then on it's just a matter of editing this store to get it to be fit for purpose for your business once you've done that come back and let us go through the payment processing okay now to set up um, um your payment processing um, you need a Yoko account. So by now you should have registered on their website and created one for you. I'm going to take you where we were before. If you go to their website, I will put a link in the description below. You would then click on login, assuming you've already created an account. Click on login. It will take you to this admin portal that looks like that. So you have set up in the first time you'll have to do all your setup and finish all of that. You have the dashboard, sales and refunds. Yoko has... Um, used to always uh, take credit card uh, payments with the Yoko machine, but now they've incorporated this new cell online where you can accept payments either on an e-commerce store or, it, or you can use it like you use, you know, PayPal, where you can just send people a payment link and maybe I'll do a, a tutorial on that. Or you can like, um, you know, integrate it into a non WooCommerce website if you're selling individual things, whatever it is you're selling or you want to get payment from people, you can use uh, the payment link. But we are going to use uh, the payment gateway, right? So if you open the sell online, there are three options, payment links, 
payment gateway payment page and gift vouchers so click on payment gateways and if you open payment gateways just scroll down a little bit and you'll see your keys are shown over there you have a live public key and you have test public key over there so this is live public key and this one is a test one we're gonna start with the test public key first so you need to copy these keys the public and the secret key and keep them in a safe place and make sure you don't share them with anybody else and then once you've done that you go back to your woocommerce uh, website right and you're going to look for a plugin you need to install the the the, the, the plugin first for yoko so we're going to go into plugins if i can find it and add new then we're going to search for yoko okay yoko payments that's the one install activate right so once you've activated your yoko plugin um it should appear over here right yoko payment gateways and you can go to the settings so that you can set up what's what's required right now um that's the first way to get to this page the second way to get to this page is normal the woocommerce route because it, it's a payment gateway it will appear with your list of payment gateways right so the second way of to get to this page if you were on the dashboard you would go to woocommerce and you would go to settings then inside of woocommerce settings remember you have general products shipping payments you click on payments right now yoko payment gateway should appear on this list it wasn't there before so if you want to use pay fast as well um you, there's a video paper pay fast video tutorial here you will do the same thing look for pay fast install it and then it will appear on this list and you can use both by the way just because you're using pay uh yoko does not mean you cannot use pay fast you can use both of them because they have because certain clients might have different usabilities and you can also see which one works for you so today i'll just show you this one and pay via yoko you need to activate it but before you can activate it you need to set it up so click on the setup button and it will take you to where we were before okay so this is the same place um you can choose to enable it so i'm going to say enable and then the title is going to be yoko i'm just going to leave yoko and say yoko payments right description pay securely with your card via yoko yes customer error, error message you can estimate all of that and then you have an option to select live or test always start with a test option to see if it works okay so i'll click test and once you have clicked test you have this public key and secret key that you must put in there right these are the ones that you're going to get from your yoko um dashboard you see public and if you in the test mode you must use this one and then just copy the public key there and come back and paste it there right and then we're going to go and uh, uh let me just close that <laughs> we're going to go and copy the secret key and we're going to paste it there so once you have copied and pasted all of that you can save changes right so yoko is currently in test mode and then um, let's have a look at shipping. Let us quickly do a shipping so that we can be able to check out of our store and um, um, you know test whether the payment processing works. I'm gonna add a shipping zone, right? And I'm gonna call this free shipping. And I'm gonna uh, select the region as South Africa. Okay, South Africa, all South Africa. So this will cover all the provinces um therefore when somebody makes a purchase only people that are located in south africa can make a purchase on your store um if you haven't added a shipping zone um people that are you know people won't be able to check out of your store but people that are not in that shipping zone will not be able to check out either this is a good way to manage uh the the, the error of or the issue of somebody from like a different country purchasing from your store and then you're unable to ship to them so clearly it's a, it decide your shipping zone there and then the shipping method you're going to have to add a shipping method the first time and i'm going to use a free shipping which means that uh, everybody nobody uh pays for shipping 
everything is free you can do this and it's a good way to encourage people to buy from your store but then you will include your shipping price somewhere in your products and you'll make sure that you manage your pricing properly that you're not losing money then once you've done that we have free shipping over there um, save settings how do you save it looks like maybe everything is and then you've enabled it so that's good so um, I'm going to then go uh, back to the payments and make sure that this is enabled as well yes that's also enabled and then we'll go to the to our website okay so let's uh, refresh our website and try and have a look over there um, let's go and uh, try and sh buy something shop so we're gonna go to the shop and this is what the shop looks like. Where are my products? Okay, there's nothing in the shop. Um, so where am I going to find my products? Okay, the second one. Uh, so I haven't set this shop properly. When you get here, you should be able to see a list of your products if you've set it up properly. But um, there's another way to get your products. I will uh, go to the back end and I will look for uh, under my products there. And I will just pick this one because I know these products are there in the back end. They just not. Uh, did I um, publish them? Yes, they are published. So let's click on a the product there. And then once you've clicked on a product like that, flower carpet, uh, at the top there you can say view products so you can see that product page. But obviously you will do this properly in the front end. So this is the product page and link this so that it, it users can find it nicely. So this is a product page. Um, I it sort of hacked to get my way to get here so that I can test my payment system if it's working properly now um, um, The description is what you've written there the additional information. I am happy So let's say I was a client and I wanted to buy this All right, so add one product uh, There you go added it to the cart then we're gonna go and view the cart There you go so this is the card and I've added that one product for 16 uh, rand. All right, there you go. The shipping is free. I'm in Gauteng. I can proceed to checkout. Awesome. So you can enter your billing address details there and then check out. Let's put in our name. Scroll online. These are the ones that you must enter. My address is number 21 Rivonia Road. And I am in uh, Santon and I am in Gauteng and it's 2191-96. My phone number is 081-111-1212. And that's my email address and that's what I'm buying. And I'm going to use Yoko Payments because you can see that um, that's the only one activated because that's the only one I actually um, added it on. Then I'm going to place an order. Then once I place an order, it should take me to the Yoko page to process the payment. There you go. Now you can enter your credit card details and then process the payment and see how it goes. Because we are on the test site, Yoko does provide a test credit card. All right. So it's just for and all the ones. And um, the, the expiry date is 12. 25 and the CVV is one two three. So this is a test credit card You can use to test that your configuration has been done correctly So let's go back to the to the site where we are purchasing from and we're gonna it's four and then it's all the ones one 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 All right, and then the expiry is 12 uh, 25 and the CVV is one two three and let's test paying 16 rand Awesome. Thank you. Your order has been received. So I successfully placed an order on this website. So Yoko Payments is working. And if you go and have a look at your Yoko back end, you should see that you have received 16 Rand. But this was just a test, a test payment. So if you go to your WooCommerce and you uh, refresh the WooCommerce, you will see under orders, you have a new order right now. One minute ago, I just place an order that is 1412 order number and um, so you can have a look at what was ordered it's 16 rands that's the address so if you are running this store properly you can then ship your products to this client 
and uh, give it to them. And when they pay with a card, that money is immediately in your Yoko account and then you can draw it from Yoko account, which means you can ship immediately to the client, right? So this is good to go. I can ship this. I'm happy. And um, so this is how you do integration payment processing with Yoko. Now, the last thing I want to show you is um, obviously because we did it, we're doing the test, um, the test uh, credentials. Um, you need to go to settings and uh, change uh, from the test credentials to real credentials. So you need to go over there because you've tested that it works. So, and it's saying test mode over there. So what you need to do is that you need to change from test to live, right? And then you need to put in your new live credentials over there. Otherwise, I will leave it at test and um, check it out. Um, and, and, and thank you guys for watching. That's how you integrate Yoko into your WooCommerce store in South Africa to start receiving payments via credit card. Mm -hmm.